Okay, talk a little bit. I'll tell you, um, Dan Craig got to show you a whole lot more than I've got on scaled model airplanes. I, I guess you showed a lot of that stuff, right? We had to take out about 90% of what he was planning on showing you. But uh, we, you know, so anyway, he showed you a little bit, right? I've got just a couple of other things, and there may even be some overlap, but let me, I've got a little section here called the models of scale. Uh, this is a land shark when we had a tail stall problem with, a, with the, did you cover this, Dan? We had a tail stall problem with the, uh, with the, um, um, uh, the horizontal tail on Spaceship One. <clears throat> we were able to, because this thing flies up above 50,000 feet, the Reynolds number is really low. So we're able to build this part of the airplane, put it out in front of a truck, and measure real close to the full-scale Reynolds number. So this is a good wind tunnel model, and we use that to, put, to develop some fixes to fix the tail stall problem. Um, oh, uh, a lot of people have seen, if you've seen Black Sky, you see this, this uh, glide model. Uh, I'll go ahead and, and, and run them here. This is Spaceship One being thrown off of a tower in the, in the glide configuration. By the way, these are not radio control. They're just free flight. Okay, the, the more important thing we wanted to find out, though, was what happens in the feathered configuration. So the idea is when I was at Edwards in, in the 60s, Mike Adams lost his life during reentry on the X-15 on, uh, when he uh, had some instrumentation problems. He got the side slip out of whack during reentry. It departed, it spun, and it broke up, and he lost his life. Um, I was close to that. I knew him. I mean, he worked right over there. And uh, so that, that really, uh, when I w looked at this problem of, hey, uh, can, can we have something that flies the public in space, I wanted a generic solution to that. You know, the shuttle has to fly the angle of attack and the side slip within just a handful of degrees during the whole reentry. They spend 20, 30 minutes decelerating, and they've got to hold that perfectly, or they're going to break up, just like they did over Dallas or, or Texas. Uh, I wanted something that could reenter the atmosphere at any attitude, any angle of attack and side slip, and also any flight path angle. The X-15 had to re-enter at 40 degrees from the horizontal flight path angle. If it went steeper than that, it gets too much Q and would break up. So I made as a goal for what I did on Spaceship One, and we're sticking to that on Spaceship Two, that you can survive a re-entry at any flight path angle. In other words, you re-enter the atmosphere straight in, and you're okay. Also, that you can re-enter at any angle of attack or side slip, and you're still going to be okay. Now, a lot of people say, hey, that's crazy. Well, then again, hey, if you have attitude control problems in space, you don't want to die that day. So I wanted a configuration that would glide nicely and land like a normal glider. You know, I don't like parachutes. Uh, and, and also, that configuration, you could throw it at the atmosphere in any attitude, and it would straighten itself out and decelerate all the way through to low subsonic speeds without the pilot controlling it. Now, you've seen the movies, the pilot just roughly aligns it for re-entry. He doesn't have to, okay? He can re-enter sideways or upside down. It will align itself. He gets a wilder ride. But anyway, he's not flying it until he unfeathers. When I say not flying it, he can go full stick and it only changes the angle of attack from 62 to 64 degrees, okay? I mean, it's, it's locked in at that high angle of attack. He can use full rudder, and it doesn't change the side slip hardly at all. He can use rudder or aileron to point in a different direction during reentry. In other words, to rotate around the velocity vector like this, but in terms of side slip or angle of attack, he's not flying the airplane during reentry. And here's what it looks like. We're going to throw this thing off the tower just in a random way, and you'll see it straighten right out. 
The, the streamer is so we can measure the angle of attack. Boy. Okay. I did about six different configurations of the reentry configuration. All of them worked. But they're all subsonic. When we got into studying it with CFD and running the computer at supersonic speeds, because all the reentry the, the re deceleration is done supersonic, we found out that only one of them really worked. Five of them did not work, only one worked for a supersonic reentry. So we didn't qualify it based on these tower drop models. This was just something to kind of get a feel for what seemed to work. But we proved it in the computer because the reentry is all done supersonic. The X-15 goes through maximum Q way down at 65,000 feet, maximum indicated speed. Okay, think of it as putting a bullet into the atmosphere. Spaceship One, even though we fly higher than an X-15, we flew a couple miles higher than them, uh, it, it has maximum Q up at 105 or 110,000 feet, okay? And its Q is only 7% of what an X-15 is. Enormous difference. But anyway, this, that, that's a little bit of the model part of the development. Okay, I'm gonna, Dano, Dano I think showed this uh, yesterday, but I'm gonna show it again. Uh, when we introduced uh, uh, White Knight 2, people see this thing flying around without a spaceship on it, and for some people's minds, it looks like this thing is gonna break in the middle. <laughs> Actually, the wing is pretty strong, but there's no fuselage there. And somebody says, man, isn't that going to, like, break in the middle? And they say, well, anyway, I got to thinking about that, and I says, well, what if it did? <laughs> You're going to lose half the airplane because there's no pilots on one side, right? But I reasoned that you could fly half the airplane home and land it. So Dano, just for, I don't know, I didn't ask you to do it. You did it just for fun. He built half of a of a uh, White Knight II and, and flew it, and here it is. And, of course, success here is that you can get on ground without killing somebody. By the way, the model's over here in his booth. And sure enough, it, it flies okay. Uh, you don't see a lot of asymmetric birds. I don't know why, it's just that they never evolved, you know. Okay, uh, I'm going to leave this picture up. It's the best place to store an old airplane and open it up to Q&A.